Welcome to the Revere Veterans Corner and also with the Revere Veterans Service under the direction of Nick Bua and the Revere, Allied, the Revere Allied Veterans Council. Today we have a real special guest. He's a pillar of the community. His name is Al Terminello Jr., age 59. I'm gonna read his accolades, but we only have a half an hour, so I'll cut it down. He worked for the Revere Advocate for six years, for the Revere Journal 16 years, a 40-year member of the Revere League for Special Needs, worked for Siemens Nixdorf as a senior field engineer, a 40-year member of the Revere League for Special Needs. In 2005, Alan Ira Navaselsky founded the Revere Veterans Committee, where he currently serves as co-chairman. He will let you know exactly what they do. He's also a member of the founding board of Revere TV and the first vice chairman on the board of directors, which he served for three years. So, Al, without further ado, Please take it away and start it off. Morning, thank Morris. You. How are you? And uh, thank you very much thank for having you. me. It's having my honor. Me here today. My honor. My this honor. Is, uh, today. I, kind of home court for me. So, uh, but yeah, thank you very much, and for all those nice things that you said. Uh, but yeah, that's true. Um, I've been with the Revere League for Special Needs forever, my entire life. I was 16 years old when I got involved with them as an Eagle Scout project, and uh, they're the greatest people that I can deal with uh, that I've ever met. So I enjoy doing that, and I stay with them a lot. And then, um, of course, my other love is working for the veterans. I, I, I do that un unselfishly and without any hesitation at all. Uh, I just feel that uh, the men and women of this country who served this country and to give us the freedoms that we have, I, I don't think there's anything that I could ever do to repay them for that service. Al, I would like to ask, uh, you know, I spoke to the people in the city of Revere. Oh, the doing, people? <laughs> right. Yeah. The folks in the city of Revere. Yeah. But they are people. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. They're the best people. <laughs> right. And I told them you were coming on the show, and some of them gave me some questions. They, uh, they told me to ask you. Can I plead the fifth first before I take any of this? <laughs> if you want to have a drink, go right ahead. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. First of all, let me ask you, these are the questions that came in. How did you get started in photography? Name some interesting events that occurred. Well, photography. Well, I worked for the medical examiner's department in uh, Suffolk County. And um, at the same time, my oldest daughter was born. And my mother said to me, you know, we got to get you a camera so I can have pictures of my granddaughter. And I, you know, mothers are always right. And, and it's a funny story because I, I said to him, what am I ever going to do with a camera? And from then on it just became uh, nobody recognizes me without one so it was just something I just took to but uh, again I gotta say thanks mom uh, <laughs> and and that's that's what started me on to doing that I started taking pictures of uh, crime scenes and um, of course I didn't have to tell anybody to stand still they were <laughs> they were, they were, still. They were still already still <laughs> um, and then I kind of moved up to people that were actually living and then it, it just went on went on from there. As you were taking photography, I'm always curious, what was the f worst incident that, you ever, that ever occurred with you and what is one of the best incidents that ever occurred with you? Worst? Uh, I don't know. I haven't had any bad situations. I, I, I've i had some pretty crummy ones. <laughs> don't look at me when you say that. <laughs> uh, you know, to, to take the shot or to get the shot, you know, I, I've stood out in the snow for four or five hours waiting to get a picture at a courthouse or... Uh, I, I in Chelsea one time there was a they found a body uh, and I need tried to get a picture of it and I kind of started low crawling through the this pipe and it got covered in grease so I kind of got like uh, I, I've had my moments but I, I you know I don't know I enjoy my work so much I don't have bad moments I just have glitches in, in, in the circumstances. Understanding, uh, talking about bodies, I understand so, that you were an bomber at one time too. Yes, um, I, I graduated from New England Institute of Mortuary Science in Kenmore Square. And uh, I was a licensed embalmer. I worked in Revere uh, for a number of years for uh, the Bruno, Bruno Funeral Chapel and the uh, Porcella Funeral Home up in, um, in Beachmont. Uh, very good. And what was your best thing that you ever had in photography? My best thing? Well, I'll tell you. I was, I was honored to be the uh, photographer for Herb Reed of Herb Reed and the Platters. Yep. So I, I was his photographer for like the last five years. 
And um, I got to go to Las Vegas with him. And um, we're, and uh, to, he, he received an award out there and did a special show out in Vegas. And I got to meet Celine, uh, Celine Dion. And, um, but the best, absolutely unbelievable night for me, especially a guy that loves music, is I was with Herb in Wildwood, New Jersey, when he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I was with the OJs, I was with the Diamonds, I was with the Tokens, I, you just, Martha and the Vandellas, you name, uh, uh, you name the group from, from the 40s all the way up that were still alive, and they were all there. And uh, we, all, we all went to dinner one night at this local Italian restaurant, and just as an impromptu type of thing, every one of the greatest artists in music that were, to me ever got up and sang songs at a cappella for everybody that was in this restaurant, and it lasted five hours. Question. And it was great. It was just great. The Platters. Which what? Excuse me. Which was their favorite song? The Platters. Only you, I guess, would probably be that. Everybody. Excuse me. Everybody where I go to the veterans. Seniors, hospitals, yeah, always request it. Yeah, Herb, Herb was a terrific guy. He recently passed away. Uh, Herb was a terrific guy, and he was a great guy to work for. He was wonderful to me, uh, and uh, I, I did a couple album covers for him, and uh, I, it was just a great. That was just a great experience all the way around. And again, I love music, so who who wouldn't love That's that? That's right. You have a exploit. band called the Inclusion, I believe. Yes, I do. I'm a bass player. And uh, we play all along the the uh, the area. It, right. Actually, we're playing tonight. Uh, tonight, tonight up in Beverly at the, uh, which is a Friday night up the uh, Italian Community Center. Uh, there's seven of us in the band, and uh, we're the best of friends. We all grew up together. We all graduated together. We all come from Revere. Uh, and everybody kids us to the fact that if you try to get seven Italians together th in these days to put a band back together. After 40 years, because we were together in high school, you couldn't do it. Well, we just did it, and that's why we call it inclusion, because we just started to mess around down the cellar, and everybody says, can I come in? So we just kept including everybody, and now we just, we probably kept adding more, but we ran out of room in the cellar. <laughs> okay, here's a good question for you, which I read off on your accolades. How long have you been, excuse me, in the newspaper business? Well, With the two, with the two best newspapers in Revere, The Advocate and The Revere Journal. Well, I was, uh, I started, it was kind of a strange situation. I started out as uh, a photographer freelancing for the Revere Journal originally. And then um, I was approached to start the, in with a group, a group of people who currently are the Revere Journal to start the independent newspaper group. And we started that newspaper and and a couple of years later, we actually bought the Revere Journal in all their papers, and I, I worked with them. And then uh, about six years ago, uh, I, I went freelance and started working on my own, and uh, we did that. And you know, we're every, it's just it's a small area, it's a small community, and I say that it's a small community, the newspaper community. There's not many left, and everybody knows what everybody else is doing, and it's not rocket science. It's just basic. Uh, Basic information, running a community paper, and uh, I love it. I, I, I just sort of transferred uh, from one area to which the advocate now I, I cover outside of Revere and uh, Everett. I cover Saugus and Malden, and I'm enjoying doing that. Very good. Question number three. This comes from a gentleman on... <laughs> from Man the American on the street. Legion. No, from the American <laughs> Legion, ironically. Talk about some of the highlights of your life. Highlights of my life. Well, the absolute best highlight of my life are my two daughters. Who are? Uh, Jennifer and Jody. Uh, and I, I, have, uh, I have five grandchildren. I did lose one. Uh, the oldest one, he, um, Brandon, but I, I still have uh, four other great, great guy, children. They are. They're unbelievable. I'm very proud of them all. Uh, my granddaughter Ashley, that lives here in Revere, she just graduated last last year from Revere High School. Uh, my other, my grandson, he's getting ready to graduate this year from Woburn High School. Wow! So uh, I'm very proud of them all. Uh, you know, I'm I'm blessed. 
You are. I have you really them. are. I, I really am. That, they're, they're the best. Before this, uh, this question, as a non-veteran, but let me tell you, you are a pillar of the community, a veteran for the community, okay? I see what you do myself. As a non-veteran, what gives you the inspiration to work so hard for veterans, and for that matter, all the organizations you work hard to support, including all of the non-veteran organizations, as well as the veterans? Well, all right. I, this, nobody really asks me that. Uh, they, I, they, I know. <laughs> the bottom line here is this. Growing up in my family, I had an uncle. His name was, his name was George McKinley. Uh, and um, he, there's a, one of those squares named after him right across the street from the senior center where the uh, Killian Funeral Home used to oh, be. Oh, yeah. It's, it's there. And, and my, my Uncle George, who's not even really an uncle, but he's been so close to the family my entire life, he is an uncle. He's buried in Arlington National Cemetery. Well, give or take as it is, the bottom line was, growing up, all he ever taught me was to respect women, protect children, and, and look up to and, and continually thank people who served us in the armed forces to give us what we have and the freedoms that we enjoy. All I ever grew up with was hearing that. I'm still old school. I still stand up. I'll give people, my women, my seat or help people cross the street. I am the ultimate Boy Scout. Uh, children, protect children and watch out for their welfare because they can't for themselves. That's instilled in me since I, I was crawling around on my knees. And I just carried that with me my whole life. And it's been something that I take pride in as a, as a person of the Revere community and uh, a product of my parents and my entire family raising me. Question from a veteran. How did the Veterans Committee come about? Well, again, I, I, counsel, uh, Counselor, Commander Ivan Novoselsky, uh, you know, Revere had had a, a veterans program and then it got lost somewhere along the way. They, they never really recognized that. And, um, you know, I, I was always working with other groups and, and doing the best I can and I, I helping things along, raising money for things. I, I was actually one of the founders of the Blue Knight chapter of the uh, 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 Law Enforcement Motorcycle Organization that we did the Blessing of the Wheels down on Revere Beach. I remember that. And most of all that money went to veterans organizations and so forth. So Ira came to me and he said, you want to help me do something? He says, We're, we haven't had a veterans day ceremony in, well, I don't know, it was eight, nine years or so. You want to help me try to maybe organize it? And, you know, that, that opened the door. Ira and I are um, inseparable and, and really right on the same page when it comes to veterans, veterans organizations and doing anything for any type of veterans. So I say absolutely. And um, it started off slow. We, had a, we actually cooked our own first spaghetti and meatball dinner and there was like 50 people in there. And and now we're recognized throughout the whole this whole area here is we have one of the largest uh, Veterans Day programs around. We have almost 300 people in attendance. Mm -hmm. We have entertainment. We have kids coming. Uh, the Paul Revere School, which is, they have the best program for veterans. They they always do. They do a lot of good things. The other schools, do, but the Paul Revere really does lead the way when it comes to recognizing their veterans during the Veterans Day services. And um, now we actually elevated that one notch better the last couple of years, and we offer a scholarship at Revere High School through the Revere Veterans Committee. And that all comes from the generosity of the people of this community. Um, they show up, they buy tickets, they come to our functions, they, they put their best foot forward to help. We're, we're, the, we're, we're the vehicle that they do this with, but without, without the community behind us, we wouldn't be anywhere. So, again, to everybody who supports the Revere Veterans Committee, thank you Phil, so very much. Your, 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 your money has done wonders for programs and for scholarships for, for children, uh, students that have graduated from Revere High School. So, again, thank you very much. Al, you, that you mentioned the Revere School, the Revere Public School, excuse me. They're having an honor of veterans, I believe, November the 2nd. That's the Paul Friday. Revere School, I believe. The Paul that. Revere School, and they're going to have the Marine. Uh, Danny Clark. Danny Clark, I think, singing the National Anthem. We've had him a few times. He's yep. 
another. He's their favorite. They they get a they get money donated to them. It's first time Dan. When I used to be able to cover this full time and work during the day, uh, when Dan first got to the Paul Revere School, those kids loved him. He does a wonderful job, uh, and so every year they bring him back, and uh, he continues to get the kids involved in 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 when he sings. And let me tell you. You can hear the, the national anthem a hundred thousand times a year, and it's still the best song you could ever stand up and look at an American flag and say. I agree but, with you. But to hear Danny Clark do it brings tears to your eyes. It does. It, it you get a shiver up your spine when he comes through with that song, and it's like no other. So, my hats off to Danny Clark and the national anthem because nobody does it better. So to all you veterans out there and non-veterans, November the 2nd, show up at the Paul Revere School. I believe it's 9 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I believe so. I, I'll be working that day. I'll be on the uh, Massachusetts dime, as they say. What is your educational background, someone asked. I have no idea. Uh, I graduated from Revere High School in 1971. I was in the top, one of the top, one of, one of the 500 that graduated with that. I am somewhere in that number. That's good. I was one of the 500 that graduated <laughs> with us. Um, I, I left uh, there and I went to New England Institute of Mortuary Science and uh, got my embalming license and, and worked in that. And then I um, kind of did a change in vocations for a while and I went to uh, Sylvania Technical School and uh, for electronics and then I got a job with the, with documentation, and it, it just escalated to, as at the time during the 80s was the electronic age so everybody was buying everybody out and we were all making money because we were all field engineers and um, so we were I traveled all over the country I had a, I had a great job it, it was very demanding uh, it was a uh, quite a thing I, I spent about tw 12 to 14 weeks a year in Florida nine weeks a year in Colorado and at least three weeks a year in Manhattan on top of working around here. Um, but it, it was a time. So I was, a, I was, I was a, uh, promoted to a senior field engineer and I worked on international and national um, OEM product support. I actually, you know when they say you're no rocket scientist? Yep. Well, I actually worked with Raytheon on one of the boards for the reader that read in the first uh, program for our Patriot missile. So I don't know if I'm a rocket scientist, but I hope our company get those get our card readers get our card readers sold that night. <laughs> Here's one. I didn't even know that you were a member of the Revere Police Auxiliary, but the question does come up: How long have you been a member of the Revere Police Auxiliary? Uh, I believe it's about five years now. Never and, made uh, any arrests, Al? Uh, no, we, we don't make any arrests. Oh, what we what we do is. Um, we're used in public events. Uh, I've, helped, I've made a lot of medical calls, getting people, you know, medical assist calls and getting them out to the hospitals and things. Uh, we patrol the local areas, the schools and the parks to make sure that there's no trouble or anything else like that. Uh, I was involved in a little bit, a few things here and there. There was one uh, during the Columbus Day Parade, there was a big mess. Uh, that we that everybody that was involved in and arrests were made i i personally didn't make any but we we were there with our support but it's it's more or less about community policing is the the big thing and uh, it, it just adds more people and, and bodies out there and it's i i i like it i i, I the, the guys that are on our department they all want one thing they want a better community and they they don't, uh, they, you know, they want to help, and, and that's what we're there for. We direct traffic, we, we, we fill in, and, and we fill in those gaps that things fall in on, on things, and we enjoy doing it. We're trained, uh, thanks to now our new, our new, our new chief, uh, Joe Caffarelli. Uh, we just got trained as first responders. Uh, we, we went to the, uh, the NERPI, uh, New England Police Institute, uh, at, we were, got basic training on how to do uh, stops and safety. It's all about the safety of everybody. It's about the safety of the citizens in Revere or whatever community you're serving and, and basically the safety of the officer there. I mean, we got a badge and a gun where, where it's like anything else. We're, we're, we're viewed on the community as such, and we act that way, and I'm proud to be a member of that 
of that department. By the way, the people of Revere want to thank you and the mayor of Revere who had the community fundraising for the Columbus Day Parade a few days ago to bring back the Columbus Day Parade, which I believe we're going to have it again next year. That's great. I, I, you know, I was at that breakfast. That was a tremendous day. That was a great, great event. And again, getting back to the auxiliary police, that's what we did. We directed traffic during the Columbus Day Parade to cut off to, for the streets, and we we aided the community so that way the the the, regu the regulars, as they referred to as the, uh, the um, could take care of the important things in the city, and not worry about traffic. I got a question for you, Al, which did come up on uh, the veterans. A lot of the veterans, like myself, we used to march in the parade, but we can't walk far anymore. Uh, is there some way to make arrangements so those that want to go in the parade can ride in the parade? I think we can get a hold of ex-Governor Dukakis. He might have a tank you might want to drive around in. <laughs> you still <No>. got it? <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, I don't know. But, you know, I'll tell you what you can do, and I have some connections with this, is maybe we can get some of the guys with the antique cars to put some of you antiques in them. That's, that would be fine. <laughs> and you can name them. World War II, Korea, Vietnam. No, I, 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 you know, we could probably work something out. I'll, I'll talk to the guys at the would car club, for... and, and we'll, put the, we'll put the veterans in the cars. What better, what better way to get two for one? In? Exactly. Okay, well, I'll, I'll work on that. <laughs> okay. This is a personal question. Does your family support you and your endeavors and projects? And do you have, well, yes, do you have any children or grandchildren? What about the lady in your life, Rose? How does she take all this? Well, that's a... That's a personal question. It, you don't have to answer it. It's not personal. It, it's, it's uh, my family, believe me, my family has supported me in everything that I've ever done. Especially uh, Jennifer. 200%. Yeah, my, my parents, from the day I, I could probably speak, and that started pretty early because I never stopped. Um, I've, I've been involved in a lot of things, and my parents have been there for me. Uh, I, I've been in, in between Boy Scouts. I was in Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts. You know, I got, became an Eagle Scout. I worked at camp. I, they, they put everything I ever wanted to do, they allowed me to do. I had a band when I was in high school. I, I, I worked three jobs when I was in high school. I worked at the Nautical Bowling Alley. I was working at the funeral home with my friend Chucky Bruno, whose dad owned Bruno's funeral home, and I worked with my uncle doing flooring. I, I, they, my parents have always been there for me. They still are there for me. I, I love them to death. Uh, I thank God every day they're still with me right now, but not, they have been with me on everything. Not only that, Al, but your father, Al Terminello, who's a member of the Council of Elder Affairs to this day. He's, and your uh, mama, who used to help out the senior center, tell us a little about your dad and your mother. They, they are, the, to me, the perfect role models that I've ever had. My mother's very, very heavily involved in community affairs. She's been with the Revere League for, with special needs right. since I was 10 years old when they started it out. Uh, the w Revere Women's Club, which is, they're a great, great bunch of gals in that place. I love, they're all my mother's friends. Uh, the, everything... I think I got the community service thing, uh, being involved in that from her. My father was a police officer here in Revere. And, and I think I got be between, I worked for the medical examiner's department and being on the auxiliary police department. Um, I couldn't ask for a better combination of people who raised me and instilled the, the values of a community in me. And getting back to one other question, two of the best things that ever happened to me personally, other than my kids, and my grandchildren. One, when I my my mother pinned my eagle uh, my eagle scout medal on me, and two, my father pinned my police badge on me. Those two were probably things that I won't forget either. I don't know why he wants to know this, but anyway, I was told to ask you: Where are you currently employed, and what do you do, and do you like it? I'm sure you do. Right now, uh, well. I work part, like I said, I freelance at nights uh, with the newspaper or, or I have my own pri private photography business. But during the day, I'm the mild-mannered reporter. I, I work for the uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I work for the E911 program for the Department of Public Safety. And I work in Taunton. So I drive back and forth to Taunton every day. Wow. Um, and That's quite a ride, Al. My program is assisting people in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts with free telephones for people with disabilities. 
So uh, I, I, I handled sending out applications, first line product support, and setting up appointments for um, a field rep to go out there and maybe work on the phone. And um, I, I spend my days taking care of people all over the state of Massachusetts with all kinds of disabilities and helping them through to make sure that they have a phone that's available for them uh, to reach 911, which is paid through by a tax. So you want to know, it's paid through by a tax that's on your phone bill. It says uh, E911 tax, it's on everybody's bill. That 65 cents a month goes to run one of the best programs in this state because these phones are free, the service is free, and we do whatever we can to help anybody of any age with any type of disability in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Now, uh, could you tell uh, the seniors out there, who, if they need a phone, how they can get contact, or who, uh, uh, why would they can contact someone? They can, well, they can call me at my direct li line at 508-821-7231. Uh, that will get you an application or questions about what the program that I work for, if you have any type of disability, hard of hearing, vision, uh, motion, any type of, anything at all, we're glad to try to help you out. Uh, that will that's the uh, for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Okay. Now, we are we discussed to one other thing, cell phones. Right. Yep. Um, there's a we don't do cell phones. We do landline <coughs> telephones. Excuse me. But just in the same same line, if people want a free cell phone with 250 minutes a month, they can get a hold of cell, um, Safe Link. Safe Link Wireless. Dot com, all one word, safelinkwireless.com, and fill out an application online, and they'll send you a free telephone, free cell phone in 250 minutes a month. So that's just, we get that question all the time when they call us. Do you have cell phones? No, no, we don't. We have landline telephones, but the cell phone's are an option. Okay, what do you do to relax? Favorite hobby, sports. Also, you play in a rock and roll band, the inclusion. And what instrument and with whom? Well, I'm a, like I said, I'm a bass player. What I really do to relax, you know, I love music, and, but now we're, uh, we're out doing all that. My, my, my haven of relaxation is archery. I, I shoot in uh, tournaments. I qualified in f to shoot in five world champion tournaments. I've shot in three. Didn't win any, that but it. just glad to be there. <laughs> uh, but I, I love it. Uh, archery is just something that I, I truly enjoy. And uh, like I said, I get to shoot uh, Ohio, Pennsylvania, all over the place in, up here. In the, uh, in, uh, it's just something that relaxes me. And now I, I'm very glad to say that my two grandsons are both uh, tag-alongs now with me, and they got to enjoy the sport. And it's something that I'm proud to take with me is uh, having my grandchildren shooting alongside of me. So it's a great thing. We have a few minutes left, so I'd like to ask you, what are you uh, plans for doing things for the community and veterans in the future? What, what have you got lined up roughly? Uh, well, uh, there's, there's something that's coming up uh, for Thanksgiving um, that I, I'm waiting to hear on. I don't want to let too much out because I don't know whether it's going to come through or not, and I don't want to put people in the wrong but there's supposed to be somebody who's going to, we're going to be doing a Thanksgiving dinner and uh, for, for veterans and so forth and uh, providing transportation to and from where, the, where the, it's going to be. Um, the Revere Veterans Program runs during mostly during the summer, but we do have our Veterans Day services, which are November 11th, which is the Sunday. That's going to be at the Beachmont VFW. The tickets are on sale, so thank you for that segue right in there. And um, the tickets, by the way, are fifteen dollars at if you uh, buy them now and twenty at the door. Is that what they are? Okay, you because you, you talked to Ira. Ira, Ira's the money guy. Right. I, I don't know why he ended up being the money guy. I'm the front guy. I, I don't know whether he likes money. I have a big mouth. I don't know how that equates, but beautiful. Uh, that that's that's what we do. Um, but that's it's. I like Chinese food, so you get Chinese food. But the best part about this whole thing is I am so pleased, again, that we're going to be inviting the, uh, some of the residents from the Chelsea Soldiers home down. I get the biggest kick out of those guys and ladies. That, a couple of times we have a couple of ladies come down. They enjoy it so much. They get treated like kings because people wait on them. They bring them their food. They get to eat first. And it's such a pleasure to, to, 
just to bring a little smile to somebody's face to, at, at that type of function. And uh, everybody has a great time. So, again, that's the biggest thing that's coming up November 11th. Beachmont VFW, $15. You can't beat the ticket. Thank you for coming on our show. It was an honor to have you. And we Morris, hope to have you back again. You're a DJ, so I want to give you this. This is a copy of uh, my band's CD, so you'll have our music Thank you. anytime Thank you, you want. Well. It's been a pleasure. It's a pleasure serving Revere, the veterans, and everybody in this community of Revere. And I Thank enjoy you. working with you and for you. When you need me, I'm always available. You are, you're always there. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, folks. Until the next show, until we meet again, God bless Revere, and God bless the United States.